What's happening, folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more Marie Fredrickson, and more from the Best Of compilation, 1984 to 2000. I did want to briefly mention, I'm trying to coordinate some reaction bunches because putting them in bunches helps me think of different groups at the same time, and I begin to remember one or two other groups by remembering another group. Uh, so my plan is to put some more M-related deep dives on Monday, and Marie is going to be one of those. So it may not be every Monday. Sometimes I run out of time. Sometimes I can't do videos at all on a Sunday evening. But by and large, I expect there to be a Marie uh, reaction pretty much every Monday from here on out. So, um, And indeed, I'll continue to do, as you've probably noticed in recent times, you know, a Roxette reaction three or four days later, a Marie reaction three or four days later, a Roxette reaction. Um, so I'll try to keep it in tandem, whether it's, you know, on a similar day or maybe at different times of the week, which feels like maybe the best way to spread it out so there's never, you know, waiting too long for one or the other. And again, shout out to Jeebus. We still have Pears material to go through. We still have the his band to go through. We still have um, a number of other uh, Solo Marie uh, releases not included, you know, on this Greatest Hits album. So big shout out to you. We will get to all that eventually. And as it turns out, we're going to do a two-for-one here, because I noticed, number one, that the next tune, which translates to A House by the Sea, is quite short. It's like a minute and a half. And that imagery, which I just like the phrase, it, you know, it gives a very specific image, you know, a, whether you're thinking a cottage or some sort of home right on the coast, right on the sea, you know, looking out to the horizon, hearing the waves, the seabirds, the whole atmosphere it just comes across in that phrase. But the next tune is After the Storm. Now, obviously a storm can be conceptual or metaphorical more than literal, although sometimes it might operate, you know, on both levels. <clears throat> but because of the phrase, A House by the Sea, reading the phrase After the Storm, I immediately imagined a sea storm and perhaps the setting with The House by the Sea, you know, in the shot. It just felt like they were maybe connected. So, to be fair, they might have no relationship whatsoever, and indeed they might come from disparate periods of her solo career, but I like the way the phrases work together, and given that the first tune seems to be so short, I felt like it might be decent to do a two-for-one, so let's get it. This is Marie Fredrickson. The tracks are A House by the Sea, followed by After the Storm, which I do want to give myself a tiny bit of credit. When I looked at the Swedish phrase for the second track, I was pretty sure it meant After the Storm. Sure enough, looked it up on Google Translate, and my suspicion was correct. Not, I suppose, a revelation, but I just did want to mention that. So here we go. Marie Fredrickson, A House by the Sea, followed by After the Storm. Seabird's a star. Thank you. 
So, I mean, first of all, the overall atmosphere was definitely, it felt light and renewed, you know, cleansed and, you know, renewed by the, um, the storm. So I don't know, uh, as I said, if there's any connection to House by the Sea, uh, but just the, the latter track alone really encapsulated the vibe suggested by the title. Now, again, it could be conceptual in terms of the storm. It could be... Um, ultimately not as happy and bright as it sounds, but the atmosphere of the Sonics really did hit on a vibe I may have expected given the title. Um, and yeah, see, now this is why, this is why, because now I'm forgetting what I was gonna comment on. What was it, what happened at the end of the tune that I wanted to mention? Uh, oh, okay, so I did remember this time, but that has happened a number of occasions where it's like, oh, I don't wanna like step on a part of the tune. And then a couple other things happen and then my brain forgets. But there was that point where there was that deep bass swoop. There was a, you know, a nice bass groove throughout the tune. But then it got to a point where there was this deep bass swoop, which really like, you know, had a, a more electric and heavy sound. And then right after that, her vocal shot into the stratosphere. So I enjoyed the way that part was um, composed and sequenced. And I enjoyed both the sound of that deep, heavy bass sweep um, as well as Marie just, you know, rocketing into the sky. So, um, once again, shout out to Marie. Uh, as I said, I don't know if A House by the Sea and After the Storm are related, but it was a really cool sequence of tracks. In terms of A uh, House by the Sea, it started like, you know, actual seabirds, and then it was this um, almost like, uh, well, it was a cappella. I actually wondered if it was going to be a cappella the whole time, and then it kicked into that let's say, more normal Marie singing idiom. Uh, and that moment was very dramatic, you know, really captured my attention. Um, and I was surprised by how much the tune did in a minute and a half. Now, I could have taken more of it. It felt like a track that I would love to hear more of. But, you know, sometimes a minute and a half, it's like, okay, you know, maybe it's not even so much a song per se. Maybe it's, you know, kind of like a a spoken word bit or maybe it's you know kind of a novelty like piece but no this was you know it felt like a fully developed track over the course of a minute and a half so I enjoyed that as well uh, so yeah bottom line cool sequence as I said um, I'll try to cluster uh, Marie reactions on Mondays from here on out as well as doing at least one reaction for Roxette in tandem whether you know on the same day or otherwise uh, and yeah, as I said, shout out to all the people who've been part of this journey, um, you know, which is not as old as the rock set one, of course, but obviously I'm depending much more when it comes to her solo material, at least um, in Swedish. I don't know uh, if she, at this point, I'm not aware if she has um, a significant number of tunes in English and her own material, but looking forward to all of it either way. Do let me know what you think of either of these tunes. I will see you next time. Peace.